Today we are going to talk about writing social research. This is the last lecture of this course. After conducting your social research, you should write a report as the outcome of your social research. According to Oxford English Dictionary, a report is a statement of the result of an investigation or of any matter on which definite information is required. During your academic career, you may encounter multiple types of reports. This can be field report after you conduct the field research, laboratory report after you conduct an experiment in a laboratory, clinical report after you conduct a clinical trial, technical report after you conduct a technical innovation, bachelor degree thesis when uh, undergraduate students try to get a bachelor degree, master thesis when a uh, graduate student try to get a master's degree, and a doctoral dissertation when a PhD candidate try to get a doctoral degree. Your report should communicate a body of specific data and ideas, and you should provide these specifics clearly with sufficient details to permit an informed evaluation by others. And you should review your report as a contribution to the general body of scientific knowledge. And the report should stimulate and direct further inquiry. There are some basic considerations when you write your report. First is about your audience. Before drafting your report, you should ask yourself who you hope will read it. Are they scientists or general readers? If your report is written for scientists, you can make certain assumptions about their existing knowledge and you can summarize certain points rather than explain them in detail. Similarly, you can use more technical language like jargon than would be appropriate for a general audience. On the other hand, if your report is written for general readers, you need to explain terms, assumptions, and specific techniques, techniques you use in the report. And second is about the form and the length of the report. It can be a brief report, a short research note. It can range it from one to five pages long. You type it in computer, double spaced, and this kind of brief report should be concise and direct. Basically, you should tell your reader why you feel your findings justify a brief report, and then tell what these findings are. You can write a paper, and it will vary in length, it can range from 10 pages to 100 pages. And you can write a book of your research, you can range it from, for example, 100 pages to 500 pages. And you should define the aim of the report. Is it an exploration of a topic? Is it just a description of an event? Or you try to explain why something happened? And finally, uh, something like evaluation research, you can propose an action a social intervention program to deal with a problem and specify what your intended results are. Next, we are going to talk about the composition of your report. Your report starts from a title page. The title itself is an important opportunity for you to tell your audience, it can be either scientists or general readers, what your research is about. Depending on your discipline, there may be a requirement for the format of the title page. So you need to check what that is. On the right side of this slide, you will see a required format for the master thesis or doctoral dissertation at the Wayne State University. You can include a table of contents uh, in your report. Uh, this is optional if you just uh, write a brief report or short paper, so this is not required. But if you are writing a book or a long paper, uh, sometimes it's better to include the table of contents. 
In the table of contents, you should list the contents of your report in order. And then when your report is long enough and complex, complex enough, you should add subheadings if applicable. You should provide a page number, and these page numbers should be accurate. If you are providing an electronic copy, like in a Microsoft Word document or PDF file, you can use the link functions uh, when a reader clicks the page number or the headers or subheaders, they can just uh, go to the part in the report. And the right side uh, of this slide, you, should, you can see a typical table of contents. Right before the chapter one, you should provide abstract or summary. The abstract should be placed immediately before the first chapter of the report. Sometimes there is a board limit when you submit report to a journal. The abstract or summary should take the form of a short factual statement identifying the topics of your study, the approach you adopted, and the findings. Sometimes you can include the conclusions in an abstract or summary. This is a bird eye view of your results. And it can be used uh, by future researchers or students. And this abstract should give a brief exposition of the research problems, purpose of the study, scope of the study, research approach, and the limitation. Then after the abstract and the summary, we move to chapter one. In chapter one, you usually provide an introduction or the background of your social research. You should explain the background or social context of the study, the significance of the problem, why it is important. You can list your research questions to try to answer with your social research. You can explain your purpose, objective, or contribution of the current study. It's optional, but you can include an overview of the main findings of the study, but this usually go to the conclusion part. Chapter 2 of your report is a literature review or context of the study. The literature review is to show that you are aware of where your current research fits into the general body of scientific knowledge. In Chapter 2, you can describe the current state of research in your defined area or topic. You consider whether there are any closed related areas you also need to refer to. In chapter two, you will introduce general agreements and the disagreements among the previous researchers. Uh, you can specify if this current research is trying to replicate or challenge previously accepted ideas. And to establish your rationale, you should identify a gap where you argue that future research is in need and explain how your current research uh, plan to attend to that particular research gap in the literature. In chapter three, you should explain how you design and execute your social research. You should provide details about the population, the sampling frame, the sampling method, and the sample size. To what extent your sample represents the whole population? You should introduce your data collection methods, are your data coming from service, experiment, field research, or are you using secondary data? You should talk about research ethics. Do you get informed consent for all participants? Are there anonymity and confidentiality guaranteed? Did your social research get approval from IRB? You should talk about the completion rate, like the response rate of your questionnaire, how your data is processed, how they are coded, how you, do you handle your missing data. And finally, what's your plan to analyze the data? In chapter four, you should provide your results uh, from the data. The key to a great results section is that you should describe your results. You need to tell your readers or audience exactly what you found. This is where your documents 
or report uh, what was observed or discovered. Um, but this is the not place for discussion. In chapter 4, you should present the data, the manipulation of this data, and your interpretations should be aggregated into tell a clear storyline. You should present your rationale for a particular analysis, present the data relevant to it, interpret the results, and then indicate where that results lead next. There are some tips for writing your results. You should focus on the key results. The results should be clear and concise, but don't go into too much in detail. Let your pictures do the talking. Sometimes the pictures can clearly show the storyline. However, be careful not to omit anything. And it might make life easier for your readers by simplifying the results. For example, 75% is e easier to understand than 150 out of 200. And the nearly 10% is easier to digest than 9.98%. In chapter 4, you should describe your results, but don't explain or discuss them. This is what the discussion section is about. After results, uh, it should be chapter 5, the discussion section. In this section, you should interpret and explain your results. Is your research questions answered? Justify your approach and critically evaluate your study. You should let the researchers know, the audience know the limitations of your current research, what are the policy implications, and where future research might be directed. After the discussion part, there will be a chapter 6. You conclude all your findings in this section. This conclusion section tends to be much shorter than a discussion section, usually only one paragraph. It is not just a summary of your research, but it needs to be a conclusion as the main points that have emerged from your country research and what do they mean for your field. Next, you can include a acknowledgement part, but this is also optional. You can thank your family members, like your wife, your kids, or your parents, your friends, your respondents who help you read this paper, your colleagues, your fellow mates, your subordinates, or your professors or supervisors. Then you should include a reference to your report. Whenever you cite information, you see include graphics for another source. You must credit this source into your references. Otherwise, it is a plagiarism. You should always check which, re which reference style you should use. It is an APA, SA, or something else. Finally, it's optional for you to include appendix or supplemental documents. This could include for a qualitative research, you can include transcription of interviews. For quantitative research, you can include some examples of questions or four results of questionnaires. If the, the table of data is too long, like two to three pages, you can include them in the appendix or supplemental documents. And in this part, you can also include some materials not published in standard sources, like uh, scripts or codes from SPSS. Another optional part in your report is the abbreviations. You can use the list of abbreviations uh, as an effective way to avoid repeated lengthy technical terms throughout your re report. But they should be used sparingly to prevent your text from becoming difficult to read. And on the right side of this slide, you can see some typical examples about acronyms and abbreviations. After you complete and writing your report, you should go public. You can present your results or your report at regional, national, international conferences. And then you can publish the article 
in the scholarly journal. To make this happen, you should identify a journal that publish this kind of articles on the topic of your research. You should follow the instructions for submitting articles, including, uh, inclu including instructions for formatting article, like the page size, like the uh, word limit, something like that. And then after you submit the article to an academic journal, you should go through the peer review process. Sometimes your report are accepted pretty much as submitted, only minor changes. Some are have to return to you for revision and resubmission, this is called RNR. Sometimes if you are unlucky, you can go through two to three rounds of RNR. But other papers can be just got rejected. It happens. To meet the cost of publication, sometimes a, a journal will require that the authors pay a small fee on acceptance. The last part is that sharing your data. After you collect your data, you write a report for it, and you should make the data publicly available for other researchers. Why? Because a single study does not provide or prove a point. Only a series of studies can begin to do so. You should remember that your current research is just a contribution to the general body of scientific knowledge. So replicability is the essential norm of science. Another researcher, reviewer, or secondary analysis should be able to replicate the analysis from the same data you are using. Otherwise, your conclusions are unwarranted. And in the data you share with your researchers, uh, reviewers, or other people, you should be aware of the anonymity and the confidentiality issues. And you should let them know what are the shortcomings and the limitations of your data. 